Meanwhile, the FBI is looking into the apparent hacking of an email account belonging to a former White House contractor. The emails were posted online and seem to reveal personal travel details of both Vice President Joe Biden and Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. They also included what appears to be a scanned image of First Lady Michelle Obama's passport. And we are joined by CBS News uh, State Department and Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan uh, again to explain just how the White House is responding here. Uh, Margaret, so federal investigators have determined what regarding the authenticity of these leaked emails? They won't say. They're not denying that these are, in fact, hacked from a uh, contractor who mm -hmm. worked for the White House for a bit of time to handle logistics. Uh, whenever a principal, as they say, whenever a president, vice president, First Lady moves. There are so many people who go in in advance to plan the logistics down to the very second of their schedule, which hallways they walk down. And it was that kind of information that became public from this allegedly hacked account of this short term contractor. So the White House, the Justice Department, the FBI, the, the Secret Service, all using the same very careful language saying we're trying to uh, confirm the authenticity because if in fact that is Michelle Obama's passport, as it appears to be, that's very sensitive information. Yeah, terrifying, really, uh, in, a, in a way. Ian Malul, what do we know? He was one of these contractors mm -hmm. who did advance work. So he was going to plan out Vice President Joe Biden's travel. Uh, he also worked for the Hillary Clinton campaign and did some work with the First Lady. So he had access to personal schedules and information, as he should. That was part of his job. The problem is he was using a Gmail account that was allegedly hacked here. And so it highlights once again how frequently government workers, whether they are officials or staffers, can cross over their accounts and use vulnerable accounts. But listen, I mean, even if it was a government account, we have seen the State Department and we have seen the White House, uh, their unclassified email accounts hacked. So nothing secure. Again, Gmail here. Obviously, this is all against the backdrop of the news of the Yahoo hack. 500 million accounts compromised, security questions and answers uh, taken as a part of it. So last week, we see DCLeaks.com expose Colin Powell's personal okay. email. Josh Ernest yesterday says, with regard to the current situation, we're we're not. Our level of concern is not does not rise to a, a, a level that uh, should uh, worry uh, us. But how is this going to change cybersecurity measures moving forward? This is the thing. It's kind of the wild west right now. Yeah. That cyber world and the White House is literally just now writing some of these rules of engagement, coming out with these cyber policies in terms of when a hacking happens, how federal investigators and who gets what part of that puzzle um, gets hammered out. The problem is that when it's a private company like a Gmail, like a Yahoo, you know, Gmail of course owned by Google they in many ways are responsible for the security of their own clients. It's not the government yeah. building a wall to keep hackers out. It's a private company. And the assumption is basically if it's sensitive, try not to put it in email. But you know, I mean, practically speaking, in real life, you rely tremendously on that. And when it came to Colin Powell's emails, we know those were authentic because he came out and said, they were, yep, they were I wrote real. them, that was they me. were real. And we're not seeing that yet from the White House. But the, the other question is, was this a state-sponsored actor? Welcome to the, really, welcome to the front line of a war that seems to still just be taking shape. The information here. wars. Margaret Brennan, insight, completely appreciated. <laughs>